got the latest remnant fly tied up here today, and this one turned out kind of different. <laughs> um, if you haven't seen what these remnant flies are yet, then I suggest look in the description down below. You'll find a link to the introduction of what the remnant flies are. These are basically made with just remnant material, stuff that I've you know, accumulated on my desk or through tying classes that uh, are all sitting in a box and I'm just kind of throwing something together. This particular fly started out with this Gamagatsu stinger hook and these dumbbell eyes and thinking something Clouser-ish. Uh, then I ran across some of this uh, ribbon material which was kind of making the rounds about 12 or 13 years ago in fly tying especially for smaller mayflies and, and nymphs but I had some and I thought it'd be interesting to, to cut one side off and palmer it on and uh, see how it how it turned out some rubber legs got thrown in because they're always good especially for a warm water fly and a rabbit tail so that's the latest remnant fly I have no idea what the heck I'll call this, even if it does start to catch fish. But I'll go ahead and get started. start this remnant fly. This is a Gamagatsu hook. I don't know the model number. It was in with my other hooks. It's, it's just some, it's a stinger, might be a B10S, but um, it's just a basic stinger hook. I'll put that in the vise and debarb it. For thread, I am simply going to use Excuse my reach. This is some labels off of it, but this is a Danville 6 aught in chartreuse. Start off, I'll put a little wax on my thread. This is just going to help grip things a little bit more. Saw this hook and I got to thinking Clouser-ish type fly and looking at some other things and uh, eventually saw some eyes and everything, so I'm kind of going for something similar to that, but not quite similar. I'm going to, a couple eye lengths behind the eye of the hook, put a little bump in. This is where I'm going to tie in the dumbbell eyes. These are a, they look like a presentation style dumbbell eye. Wopsy's got these what they call presentation eyes because the regular dumbbell eyes they look like dumbbells they they have uh, wider parts on the ends and it's pretty uh, even in between these taper in on both sides and Wopsy like I says ha they have theirs presentation eyes like this I don't know who made these where I got these over the years I've done so many different classes with different things but it was in my stash of remnant stuff in with hooks and weights and stuff and I thought it looked kind of interesting and we'll give her a shot. I'm certain I could look up somewhere just what who makes these. Of course these also could have been made years ago and now they're they're no longer made. They're just kind of a trend for a while. I'm going to tie that in and put some head cement on there. So far, this is, you know, pretty much like you would do a clouser or something like that. Keeping in mind that because of the dumbbell eyes and the weight changes the center of gravity, so this will actually swim hook point up. With that in mind, I'm tying in some. This is a chartreuse rabbit zonker on the back here as a tail. 
I was looking for like a bright chartreuse schloppen, even a white schloppen. Didn't have any that were that uh, fit the bill. So I'm just going to tie this rabbit in. But I want to tie it in with the hair pointing down as the way I'm looking at it right now. Because as I said, it will ride hook point up. So that will turn up the other way. So I'm going to go back and forth on that, make certain that's tied in real well. You could use a larger size thread if you want. I'm going to leave the tail for now. I'm going to trim it when I get the whole fly done, just so that I'm keeping it closer to proportion. Now, here was the interesting thing. Uh, you know, years ago, this was even, I think, before Blaine Chocolate came out with his Game Changer. There are a number of people experimenting with different stuff, different materials, and some of this stuff here was used in some flies. And this is actually some sort of a, a craft or, you know, fabric ribbon. But there's a number of these different things that have come out on the market for different uh, uses since then. But I remember doing a class years ago just experimenting with this stuff and seeing what, what it could do. So after I saw the hook in the eyes, I thought of this stuff and I thought, well, it would be interesting to just cut down along one side and just palmer that in as like a hackle and to see what it looks like. So that's what I'm going to do real quick. I'm just going to cut one side off here. Hoping that everything is connected on the opposite side and I don't end up with the whole thing falling apart on me. I've seen where people will actually, especially on smaller hooks and smaller flies, they'll cut these at an angle so that when you tie it in and you wrap it forward, So they'll cut these at an angle so they'll be long on one end and short on the other. So when you tie it in on a smaller hook and polymer forward, it gives you a natural taper. I'm just going to go full length and see how that turns out. So I got to tie this in first. Understanding that when I tie this in and I start to wrap it, I want it to point back that way. So I'm going to tie it in such that this part here, I just clipped a little bit off here so I can tie it in, but this part here will face actually you, the camera, the viewer, the person watching this. Like I said, because now when I Go to wrap this in, see how it flips over. Then I thought as an underbody or, or something of, you know, I was looking for different materials and I just decided real quick to go ahead and just do some chenille. So this is just a fluorescent nylon chenille, chartreuse fluorescent nylon chenille. I am going to wrap this forward up to the eye. And what else? I've got some rubber legs. These are um, a Magnum Predator leg by Hairline. Um, and it's just a silly leg. It's, it's actually kind of an extra wide silly leg and they are extra long silly legs. I'm going to cut these in half and then probably cut them in half again. But we'll see because I got to figure out how I'm going to tie this in. So I've got an underbody. I've got a hackle that I'm going to have go in. I want to tie some legs in that will probably sit on the inside here, but then bring all of this forward to just around the eyes too. So for now, I'm just going to bring this up here. And I will palmer the chenille forward. You could dub this body if you wanted to instead of using a chenille, I suppose.
Hmm. I wonder if I could. Yeah, I'm going to come right over here. And I am going to tie this in. So it's all done. Now I'm going to scooch this back a little bit. So in the future, if I do these, I want to have a little bit more room just to have a little bit of extra room there. And I think I'm going to bring my thread back down and go ahead and tie this in. And I'm just going to tie this in right underneath, like so. Get a few wraps in like this. Double this back over, like so. Bring my thread back up. In the future, I may find a better way to do that. I don't know. We'll see. I think on an octopus. All right. So now I'm just going to wrap this in. Probably originally I thought I would just wrap it in one wrap in front of the other, but I think I'm going to spread it out. So I've got that green. And see what this does. So now remember the whole focus on these remnant flies is that they are kind of all experimental. I'm going to put a couple, two, three wraps right there. And then I'm going to bring this around the top here. Well, that kind of looks funky, doesn't it? So rather than that, I'm just going to bring it right up underneath on the bottom and put in a couple of wraps up front to give me kind of a head to it, maybe. And then just tie this off. Hmm. It might work well instead of the chenille as like a braid. Some sort of a braid, a flat bodied braid or something like that. You wouldn't have that tuft, which is really no big deal, but you'd still have see some of that under chartreuse color. And possibly even if you wanted this a little fuller to tie in um, two strands. Trying to cover up that last little nub there, and it's just not getting covered up. So I'm going to unwrap it and cut it a little bit more. Trim it back, as it were. You find yourself having that issue um, often when you're tying. Get yourself a cauterizing tool. Cauterizing tool is really nice once you kind of get the hang of it because you can easily melt back hair or plastic synthetic, get those fuzzies off of there. I know some people are fond of just taking a lighter and running a big lighter under it. Drew, Drew Chacon does that on a lot of his videos uh, where he'll just take a big lighter and run it down under there just to melt those fuzzies away but this I'd be careful because you're going to melt all of this away. We got a little bit here of the other backing on the other side. So well, that's kind of weird looking. Okay now a little head cement on this. Hold that together 
I'm going to trim the rubber legs. I'm going to go maybe about a shank length or so past the bend of the hook. Just to shorten those down a little bit. And then for the hide, probably about the same thing. I want the hide maybe about the length of the body. That'll actually put the tail longer because that hair will be stuck out behind it. But that is the latest remnant fly. So this stuff did not stick up as much as I thought it would. I kind of thought maybe with the chenille in there, it would kind of get it to you know stick out like this. Maybe another application it would. That looks kind of weird. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, this will go into my remnant box. And sometime this summer, I will get the GoPro out, get this out some evening, dredge it through some holes and see what I can catch. So that is the latest remnant fly. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining me at the Vice today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern, if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comments section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help dressed irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong. Thank you.